Welcome to Mornings with Mark. The psalm that I'm looking at this morning, Psalm 19, uh, C.S. Lewis says is the greatest poetry in the psalms. It's a beautiful psalm, Psalm 19. I've wrestled anytime there's a longer passage with whether to pick out a piece, but I'm going to read it as a whole because it is beautiful and just let the word of God speak. And then I'll just say one or two words at the end. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voices go out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The word of the Lord. So much in this psalm worth reading yourself today out loud and just meditating on the different sections, the different words. All of it speaking of speech, the speech of creation, proclaiming God's handiwork, the speech of God's word, proclaiming a way of life that is sweeter than honey, that gives life, and the speech that we speak, the speech that the teacher speaks, and what a privilege that is, and yet how true it is for all of us that we fall short, that we can't detect our own errors. As we see even right now in our society, how we are not, we're not even aware of our own biases. We're not conscious of them. And so what I've heard God telling me today personally as I've meditated on this wonderful psalm is to ask God to help me with those hidden faults, those errors in my thinking and in my practice and even in my teaching and preaching that fall short of the glory of God, uh, that fall into those traps of my own biases. We've all got them. And so for me, very specifically, what I've heard God saying is take at least 15 minutes today and each day to read something, some things that challenge my ways of thinking. And just ask God, to make me more aware. I don't have to agree with anything I read, all the things I read, but just to open myself up to the possibility that maybe my thinking is off. And then to keep praying in my preaching and my teaching and in all of my living. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And ultimately, of course, that's our hope. God is our help. He hears our prayers. He hears this prayer. And I invite you to join with me in it. God, thank you so much for this day you've made. We rejoice in our glad in it. For how your creation declares your glory. May our lives declare your glory too, both with our words, but also, Lord, with beyond our words, through our actions, through our thinking. Let, oh God, the words of my mouth and our mouths, the meditation of my heart, our hearts, be acceptable 
to you, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer, our help and our hope forever. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.